Thank you so much for staying with us, everyone. It's been a major issue for uh, the reasons why the president uh, visited the, the Southeast region. We saw today uh, when he inaugurated some projects being done by uh, the Mboyi state government now that the president has unveiled. It's interesting also that Mboyi is uh, a state controlled by a PDP government. Uh, yep, that's it. Uh, Devu Mai, that's the governor there. Receiving an APC uh, president, well, president of Nigeria, but of uh, the uh, APC political party there. Now, let's get a thought of uh, the president's spokesperson on the plans of the president in the Southeast tour. Thank you so much, Mr. Femi Adishina, for joining us on the program tonight. What does this tour mean for the presidency? This is a rare one, isn't it? Well, a, a president of a country is at liberty to visit any part of that country. Because before he emerged as president in the first place, he must have been voted for by a larger section of the country. The person who is able to build a larger coalition and get a larger number of votes become president. So you don't have to find a reason for that president visiting any part of the country? Um, the reason I'm asking this question is, of course, we know that's the number one citizen of the country, but he's not been visiting that region. A lot of people believe, politically speaking, he should be, and it, that's a region where out of the five states, is only one of those states politically that is uh, on the APC that is uh, run by the APC, the, the, par the, the party at the center. So it means a lot politically, of course, and that's a party, I mean, that's a region where the president did not receive support in the 2015 general election. So the, it, it's a big uh, issue when the president is going into that region. What exactly I thought and his plan uh, uh, are some of these uh, plans political in nature, perhaps, ahead of 2019? No, if, if, if some people are imputing such motives to the visit, well, they have a right uh, to be assault. But as far as the president is concerned, this is a state in the country. He has been invited to come and commission projects and, pay, and come on his state visit, and he has accepted. The fact that it's even a PDP control state says a lot that the president sees the entire country as the territory he has been voted for to preside upon. That's a region also where there are a lot of criticism that the president has um, what of, uh, marginalized that people from that region in terms of appointment and focus of his uh, uh, government in that region. Uh, when you were preparing the president to, for this tour, what are your focus and what are your agenda in, uh, when the president is planning this trip? Something about the appointment from the region. If you were here today in the places where the president has been received, that is not the general opinion. What they have been asking for is just more. It is not as if we have not got anything. They say, thank you for the ones we have got, but we want more. And if you ask people from any part of the country, it will be the same request, it will be the same sentiment. Thank you for what you have, you have given us, but we want more. So it is not only one region of the country that has issues about being under-appointed or under-represented in government. Almost every region can claim, lay claim to that. So the, what we have seen here largely today is that the zone is grateful, is happy. The, Mr. President has got two chief safety titles today. Two chief safety titles in Ebony today. So it shows that uh, the animals that people think exist in this part of the country it's just an imaginary thing. Since the time he landed in Enugu Airport, you needed to see the applause he has been receiving. Everywhere, everywhere the president has been today, he has been cheered. When he entered the Abakaniki Temporary Stadium, you needed to see the crowd and the applause that they gave him. So, 
it is so easy to stay in one part of the country right. and then begin to think that one section of the country is now with the president. It's not true. Thank you so much, Mr. Femi Adishino, for your thoughts on the program today. Uh, we also know that the president will be visiting a number of states, also in the southeast region. But we take a moment on the program. When we come back, we dig deeper into these issues. And, of course, security and electoral process in a number of states ahead of the election. Don't go anywhere, everyone. We'll be right back. So let me understand your point. Are you saying that any party can come up with whatever candidate they want, whichever way they want, irrespective of the laws, and they get away with it? As long as the primary is conducted. Listen, when a political party looks at the law very well and decides to do what you said, they will get away with it. It is only when, in their recklessness, God decides to arrest them, that they make certain mistakes, that court will now be able to find a loophole. Outside it, the, 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 the powers of political party to select candidate is so awesome that you cannot even challenge it. When you challenge it, you, 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 you are starting from a major disadvantage. Is that, is that what your party relied on? In doing what? In getting its candidates for these elections? I, 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 don't, I didn't work in the party hierarchy when they were doing that. But as far as I'm concerned, our party did what is correct and right and got our candidates. The candidates who felt aggrieved. Even though you didn't work in, even though you didn't you say you didn't work in the party hierarchy to know what happened. Because whatever happened, as far as the primary is concerned, happened before on all of us. Mm. I don't need to be inside the Manata Plaza. Okay. To, yeah. show, to, to see what, what was going on. But Speaking what about, happened in Oka, yeah. They came down. All of us participated. Whichever way to to get the uh, treatment ad hoc delegates. The list was published. Okay. So what about so now that you've said that you've confirmed that they are, it, it, it's, it's their own uh, cup of tea for those that are grieved in the yes. process, yes. does that seem to suggest that your party is not even one going into this, party, going into this election? We, that is why I'm telling you that those ones who will constitute problem have quietly and by the special grace of God have gone out. You we, sack we them, you sack them from the party? We will sack them. They sack themselves. We are not just sacking anybody. But the fact is that when you are a fifth columnist in an army, you are a very dangerous fellow. So the way we are going now, because God has decided to rescue PDP by giving us a good candidate and a very good machinery, mm, okay. God has also decided to weed out those who constitute this land. Because some of these characters, you know, oh, we have a big man in this local government. We will go there and trust to, to into his hand. On the day of the election, he will sit in his house and be sipping champagne. Right. And they tell them, Let's, uh, don't go mind it. Still speaking about emergence of uh, party candidates for the forthcoming elections, let's listen to part of the comments which you were asking what INEC said at some point. Uh, let's let you listen to this one now right. and get your response. 37 political parties are contesting in the Anambra election, which is a record. Uh, it's a record for any governorship election in the history of this country. 37. They all conducted their primaries. We monitored the primaries, but I also wish to draw the attention of civil society to uh, the action of two political parties. I wouldn't mention the names here. I mentioned it when we met with the political parties about two weeks ago. We monitor the party primaries. We know those who emerged as candidates from the primaries. But somehow, somewhere between Oka and Abuja, two parties substituted the candidates. The names that they finally submitted to the commission are not the names of candidates that emerged from the party primaries which we monitored. Again, the electoral act says that if that is done, INEC has no power to disqualify any candidate nominated by his or her party. But 35 political parties are in compliance. What transpired at the primaries is what was actually transmitted to INEC. But two political parties changed the candidates. Those who emerged from the primaries are actually not the candidates that, whose names were eventually, eventually submitted to INEC. But we said that um, if any of these candidates wins or the matter is challenged in court, will go to the court and present the true record of what transpired at the primaries for the courts to determine what to do. We will never defend what we cannot defend. Very clear on, 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 
unambiguous statement. If there are political parties who did what he said, because our own, it's impossible for what happened in PDP to have been otherwise. Impossible? Mm -hmm. Impossible. Because on a live television, vote were counted. Obaze, Obaze, Oba, Obi Obolu. At the end of the day, the, the agents of these three candidates who eventually contest the primary were present. And these votes were collated and counted. And the result announced right there inside the Women of the Center. How can anybody now? Where, where, would you, how can, where would they go? For instance, they will now say... Was INEC oh, part of the monitoring? Eh? Was INEC part of the mon part monitoring? Of, they were process? present there, right inside the hall. Because this will may put you and your party and your candidate in some kind of skirmish at the end, if he becomes, listen, if he becomes governor and will be listen, waiting listen, for the tribunal I, 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 at some I, I, point. You see, the, the issue is that this is not... Uh, uh, PDP is not one of the two political parties because the PDP process was too open and transparent. It's not a, it is those people who did their primaries behind the back, who didn't even have anything. People don't even know when the primaries were, were done. Who are they? Uh, there are no political parties. There were so many of them. So, I come here, you asked me to remove my, my scarf. I want me to advertise another political party. Chamberlain, you are not serious. Did I ask you to advertise another political party? <laughs> yes, now you're asking me who are the political parties. Why do you like mention their names? Nobody asks you to advertise. Nobody is asking you to advertise. No, you can't advertise another political party. Uh -huh. yet, that, that's not the point you're trying to make. But you know, um, your candidate. Yes. Why not a younger the the, the Anambra pop, uh, voters there uh, about yeah. two point two million. You have over forty percent of them are young people. Yes. Why not a younger candidate? What makes you think that the people will vote your candidate? My candidate is as, as young as they come. As young as they come? Yes. What does that mean? Because when we talk about age, it's all about numbers. This, I mean, anybody, there is nobody in a number of states contesting this election, the governorship candidate, who is below 45. Not one. And at that age, anybody is old. Name them from beginning to end. All of them are within the eight brackets that go to check their blood pressure, like me. So it's not a matter of choosing. If we are talking about the, definition, the core definition of youth, which is between the age of 18 and 35, yes, maybe in the oncoming years, we will try to see what we will do about that. But as of today, Anambra is a very sophisticated and complex state that needs people with a lot of experience and wisdom to manage. And when you say 40% are youth, 60% will now be old people, isn't it? Therefore, if you're talking about demographics, politics is all about number. So you look for where the larger numbers are located. Over that, is, that is speaking, that is, I mean, talking okay, actually, about I mean, Over 40% are students. So. The younger population are there. The younger population is there. And you see, we, we come from a, a, a system, particularly in our place, where there is a lot of room for growth and mentoring. People just don't jump in in my place. So, so that, will be the, that will be the message you tell to those who ask you, Nanabra, why not a younger candidate? Precisely. I'll tell them they, you, you, you wait for your turn. You come in there. You grow up. If he becomes governor now, what will he do tomorrow? Uh, ever since the invasion, we've not communicated with him, of course. Um, I remember very well, he was the very last person in the house, you know, when the invasion took place. And uh, what we know that happened is that either he was killed and taken away by the military or that he's been kept somewhere by the same people. Obviously, somebody authorized the invasion of the house, which is done. Masali, which is the defense minister. Of course, he made that clear to the whole world, even when they denied, you know, the invasion. You know, so they are, they are in a far more better position to tell us what happened to Nanda Khan. Up until today, we've not seen him, so we want them to produce him dead alive. So you are 100% sure that he is with the military? Of course, Nanda Khan was in the last uh, when they invaded the house. So it could have been that he's been killed 
or you know they took him away somewhere you know but up until today we've not communicated with him he has not spoken to anyone and we're still making reasonable effort to communicate with him what will happen if the federal government will fail to produce your brother well, then again um it's entirely up to the leadership of ipo to take the rightful decision sort of when do you so but you're part of the leadership now no i am not Advice to who, please? <laughs> the, yeah, the thing is that... It's your brother. It's also a family matter. So what do you think should be done if the government fails to produce... Of course, of course, there are laws in place. Of course, we'll pursue those lines and make sure that um, something legal is done until number can is produced dead or alive. Apart from the legal issues, how do you feel personally at the moment? It's your brother and your brother is missing. Nobody knows if he's dead or alive. How does it make you feel... Well, of course it hurts. He is my uh, senior brother, of course. It hurts so much. And um, he's my eldest brother. So um, for the fact that I've not spoken to him hurts. You know, so and um, doesn't mean I will relent, of course. The struggle is there. Come rain, come high water. It will be achieved. There was no order to arrest Namdekano. The army invaded the house, killed people, and, and things like that. They won't keep on happening all the time. For how long do you want to keep on killing us? For what have you done wrong? We've never carried arms. We've never killed anyone. We've never asked anyone to kill for us. So why are you killing us? What we are doing is agitation. Telling you we are done with the system. The system is against us. And what Namdekana is doing is attacking conditions and policies. Namdekana is not against anyone. He's not against any human being. So why have they come to kill him? Why have they taken him away? That's the questions we're asking. So you say the aggression is only coming from one side, from the side of the federal government? I think that's where it's coming from, because they don't want to dialogue, they don't want to sit down and find out what the problem is. So they, they think they can use the federal might, you know, to, to kill us, you know, to destroy us, to inflict pain on us, and believing that will work. No, we're not afraid of that. We will remain strong before our enemies and do whatever we can within the law to realize Biafra. Nobody can, it's an ideology, you can't stop it. You can't take it away from me. That's who I am. I will live and die as a Biafran. They should understand that.